All right, so today we're going to talk about wavelength and frequency and how to do some calculations that go along with wavelength and frequency. Uh, initially, this is just beginning stuff. This is just some basic concepts of like, you know, what is, uh, like what is a wave? What are some of the basic properties of that? Uh, and then we'll go from there and do some calculations along with it, and that'll be that. So uh, these are all the notes. They're in your PowerPoint. They're in, your, they're in the slideshow that's linked in Canvas, so check that out. Uh, I mainly just want to say let's look at a wave for a second. So pretty much um, if you take a look at a wave, there are a few things to be aware of, to pay attention to. So the biggest thing that we're going to care about is the wavelength, which, you know, it's right here. Uh, wavelength is represented by this little symbol. It's a Greek symbol for uh, lambda. All right, so you're going to see it like that. Sometimes you'll see it written like this. Other times you'll see it written like that. I just generally try to write it like this. Um, but that's, they're all, they all mean the same thing. They all mean wavelength. All right. Now, wavelength is just the distance between two peaks or valleys to troughs on a wave. It's the same. It doesn't matter whether you're up here or down here. That's just the wavelength of a wave. Uh, wavelength is usually going to be measured in one of two possible units. It'll be meters or nanometers. All right. Now, we'll talk about the nanometers conversion um, a little bit later. Like, we'll do that. But for this moment, you don't need to worry about it. Um, then there's frequency. So the other big thing that we're going to care about in a wave is frequency. Now, if you look back at the notes, it says frequency is the number of waves that pass a given point in one second. All right, so that's frequency. It's the number of waves that pass a given point in one second. Now, what does that basically mean? So let's imagine that this wave is traveling that way. Waves going this way. Let's imagine that we have a point right here. The frequency of a wave is simply is, is just measuring how many times a wave, so how many times this this wave, basically measured by wavelength, is going to pass that point in one second. All right, that's what it's looking at. That's all that it is. So it's saying basically, you know, how many times are you going to go past here in one second? All right. Now, all the waves we're looking at, they travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light. All right, and the speed of light is represented by the value of C. Because what we're talking about, all these waves that we're looking at, they're waves of electromagnetic radiation, which is basically just light. And we're just pretty much looking and saying, like, okay, what's the speed of light? And the speed of light is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it's really fast. It's, like, ridiculously ultra-fast. Uh, you know, fastest thing that exists, pretty much, right? So, to be clear... The, the speed of the wave does not really alter the frequency of it. The only way to change the frequency of a wave is by making the wavelength bigger or shorter. All right, because we're not changing the speed of the wave. That's important to know. So it's important to, re to, to recognize a, a relationship between frequency and wavelength. All right, and this is something you might want to write somewhere. All right, so first, oh, and frequency before we do that. So frequency, let's zoom in the TT right here. So in representing frequency, uh, it has a specific unit or representation as well, just like wavelength has this. So remember, these are equal to wavelength. Lambda is equal to wavelength. And the Greek symbol nu, nu is equal to frequency. So frequency is equal to... It, it basically looks like a V or kind of like a U with a tail in the front. But you can pretty much just write it like that. That's completely fine. So that's frequency. It's like a little V. It looks like that. Now, something that's really important to know, they have an inverse relationship. As frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. All right. As wavelength goes up, frequency goes down. So they're, they are inversely related. One goes up, the other goes down. So that's something really important to know. So the way I just generally write that, I just write by right, frequency. So as frequency goes up, right, wavelength goes down. So they have an inverse relationship. That's an important thing to remember. All right. 
now. So this is just a quick review of what we what we talked about in class. I just wanted you to have it on video also in case you need to remember any of it. Now, what I want to do though, I want to go over uh, some examples of how to do these calculations. So first, one, bear with me, uh, you're going to want a calculator. So you're going to want a calculator, ideally scientific graphing calculator. If you insist on using your phone, you can turn it sideways and you will get a scientific calculator out of it that way. So that's cool. Uh, we're going to be dealing with numbers in scientific notation. So be aware of that. Uh, don't get freaked out. These problems can look confusing. They can look a little intimidating or challenging, but they shouldn't be because in the end, all you're doing, you're just simply doing basic uh basic algebra here. It's not complicated. It's just because it's, it's a number in scientific notation and you're like, whoa, I don't like that. So, don't worry. so uh, let's get to work. So to begin with, uh, there's going to be lots of information presented to you in some of these problems and most of it is useless and doesn't matter for the problem. So like I said, the red colored light and fireworks display might uh might be produced when strontium salts are heated. Like, yeah, that's right. That's good. But does that help us with this problem? No, nope, it means nothing. It's like, who cares? Okay, we don't care about that for solving this problem. What we do care about is that it says, what is the frequency? So it's saying, what is the frequency? So this is telling us that it wants us to solve for V. So it's saying, what's V? We don't care that it's red light. That actually doesn't matter in this part. of Like, it just doesn't matter. The wavelength tells us that it's red light, but that doesn't matter for solving those problems. We just want to know what's V, what's the frequency. So we know that our wavelength is 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. So you're going to generally have some pretty small wavelengths of things. Don't freak out by that. Now, we know our formula, and we also know, and this is something that, that people struggle to remember a little bit, C is the speed of light. C is always this number. It is a constant value. It never changes. So C is always 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So you're only given two things here. you got to use this formula, but you need to realize that C is always this number. So you're just going to plug that in there. All right, always. Now, for solving, I really suggest that you manipulate this equation before you plug numbers in. I really do. So we're, uh, we're in this case, we're solving for frequency. So we need to get frequency by itself on one side of the equation. All right, so we just want to have frequency by itself. So to do that, I'll rewrite it over here. So we'll say over here we got C. So to do this, simple, let's just divide both sides by wavelength. So you cancel that out, and you're left with C over wavelength is equal to frequency. So just some basic algebra there, and you get your the, the, the solved equation that you're going to want to use. That's a good thing to remember. All right. So once you do a few of these problems, you'll just realize you're basically just dividing the speed of light by whichever one you're given. I mean, that's what you do every time for, for these problems specifically. So, all right. Now let's just plug it. Let's set everything up, plug it in, and solve. So we're going to put 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second on top. Now it's important, very important, that you label this, include your units. I'll show you why in a second. Your wavelength is 6.5 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So you'll do that. You're going to divide these two things. Now first your units, meters, is going to cancel out. and You're going to be left with 1 over s. That's okay. 1 over s is a good unit. That's what we want. What is that unit? Well, 1 over s is equal to hertz, hz, which is our unit for frequency, which is what we are trying to solve for. So, yay, that worked out well for us, didn't it? It's always good. If you, if you write it out and you label it, you set it up right, it's always going to work out. If the units don't cancel out, then you did it wrong, and that's a way of knowing that you did it wrong. That's a good way to check, so I suggest you do that. Now, as far as math goes, calculator. The most common error by a mile and a half of all students is this. 
So by far the most common error that all students make is this. There we go. Now it's another one. Fancy. So you're going to do three and one. If you want, you can even program your calculator to just have the speed of light in it. I always program C into my calculator. I think it makes it really easy. So if you want to do that, you can just type 3.0 times 10 to the 8. Then you hit this little STO button on the bottom, store, or it depends on the calculator, but they all have something like this. You hit that. Seriously? This thing might be running out of batteries. Do that, you can hit store, and then you just type alpha C, hit enter, and then from now on, whenever you type the letter C, like there you go. If you want to do like, oh, look, C plus one, oh, look at that, look at that, you did it. Great, congratulations. But I, it, it just makes it a little easier usually. So we're going to be solving this equation, remember, and we are solving for frequency. So we know our units are going to be one over S hertz, it's good. Now let's uh, let's actually solve. It. So you're just gonna do. I'm just gonna type it in for this. Thing. Let's see. Also oh, three, uh, 3.0 times ten to the a. Now, the one error that people make is this: when you divide, when you see this on the bottom, and you're gonna divide, uh, make sure that you include that you use parentheses. So you're gonna put six point five times ten to the negative seventh in parentheses. If you don't do that. It's wrong. It'll if you don't do it, it'll always be wrong. You'll get four point six, but you won't get e to the fourteenth times ten to the fourteenth, and that'll be a problem. So when you see this in your calculator, don't freak out again. This is easy. First, we're always gonna we're always gonna just go to two decimal points, to two digits after the decimal point, always. So we're just gonna write four point six. We'll round that up to um, two. So I'm just going to write 4.62, and then this E14, E14 just means times 10 to the 14th power. That's what it means. So then finally, our units, uh, we're left with 1 over S, so we're going to write. So you can write 1 over S. Sometimes you might see it written as S to the negative first power. I don't like doing that because I know negative exponents bother people a lot. Uh, or you can just write 1 over S, or you can write Hertz, HZ. I don't care. It doesn't matter. They mean the same thing. And this is our frequency, which, oh, look, it, it matches right here. Congratulations. So, again, 1 over S is the same thing as Hertz. There you go. There's example 1. Example 2, same deal. Hopefully you've tried this. In this case, it's a little different, um, so I'm just going over this with you again. So in this case, we've got example two from PowerPoint now. Uh, slide like six or seven or something. I don't know. You can follow along, but I hope you are. So here we're same deal, same formula. So we got C is equal to wavelength times frequency or frequency times wavelength. It doesn't matter. Remember, they're interchangeable. Um, so in this case, we know that our frequency is this. So we know this is our frequency. How do I know that? Because it says frequency. It says hertz. There's like three, there's two ways to figure it out. And it says, what is the wavelength? Again, it's the only number that matters. Well, it's the only thing that matters. What is the wavelength? Boom, done. What's the wavelength? So you're solving for wavelength. That's a really ugly wavelength symbol, sorry. So you're going to solve for that, and you're going to do that. So, again, I strongly suggest that you rearrange this equation. Like I said, you're going to realize, uh, in this case, we want to solve for wavelength, so we'll divide both sides by frequency. Those will cancel. You'll be left with C. Do not let the goofy symbols fool you. I know that, like, that, that bothers kids a lot, too. Don't let that bother you. Just remember, wavelength, frequency, speed of light. Always. So remember that C... Again, this is something people always forget. Every problem, I have to remind people every problem. C is always 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Always. It's just always a number. So now I'm just going to plug my stuff in. 
I'm going to do 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by 3.44 times 10 to the 9th, which is our frequency. I'm just plugging it in there. You know, I'm just plugging it in right here. And we're, just, we're just doing it. Now, I do recommend that instead of writing hz, that you write it 1 over seconds. The reason I recommend you write it 1 over seconds is because then it allows you to cancel out very easily the seconds and you're left with just meters, which makes sense because you're calculating wavelength, which is a length. All right. So you'll do all this. You will divide these two things. Again, remember, uh, remember that when you do this, you need to, uh, you know, so you can hopefully just have your C typed into your calculator. So it's that divided by, in parentheses, 3.44 times 10 to the 9th. When you do that, and, you know, you got an answer. Congratulations. So, uh, here, let's move about this. Reflecting light, always a problem, perpetually in document cameras forever and ever. Whatever. So you're going to say that your uh, wavelength is equal to 0 0.087 meters. Yeah, meters is, you know, there because it's what's left over. Now, you can check, and oh, look, the answer says it's 8.72 times 10 to the negative second meters. And you're like, that's not the same thing, but, but it is, it's exactly the same thing. Remember, it is exactly the same thing. If you were to move this over two spots, it would be 8.7 times 10 to the negative second. So it's the same thing. All right, so... Keep that in mind. Uh, and those are two examples of how to solve wavelength and frequency calculation problems.